excited to be here. I am not James Holland. I have a history of 20 years as an ornithologist, 13 of those years on St. Catherine's Island here in Georgia. So a bit of a different approach. We're all still tough as nails though. <laughs> so I'm gonna to talk today about full lunch. And like all river keepers, while we work together and we work statewide often, we really focus in into our watershed. And who knows how many basins that you consider in the Altamaha watershed. Now the map has gone down. So we have the Altamaha, the Okmulgee, and the Oconee. It starts in Atlanta, north of Athens, runs through middle Georgia, and then ends up at the coast. 56 counties to work in. All right, here's plant shearer. So today we're talking about coal ash. Who here knows what coal ash actually is? All right, coal ash is the byproduct or the leftover material after burning coal. So to create electricity. We have a number of plants uh, in the state. We only have three active. Is that right, Jesse? We tried to figure that out. We only have three that we know of active now. Plant sure is found in Juliet, Georgia, North of Macon. And most of the examples I'm going to give here are going to be found in the Altamaha. But they are across the state. Uh, so historically, what has happened is coal utilities or coal burning utilities have dug a big hole in the ground. Sometimes they've dug it over a river or a creek. And they usually created a lake next to it. That's for input and output of water for cooling. But here, for example, you've built a dam. And so the coal ash gets thrown into the pond and water gets put into it. A very typical sediment pond situation. I guess I have to come over here. And... There's a pointer. There's a pointer over there. With a laser. Let's see how we do. Aha. So in 2015, the Environmental Protection Agency recognized that there were problems with these coal ash ponds. These big holes in the ground that had no liners were leaking, they were seeping, there were some soups, sometimes they were spilling. You probably heard about this spill on TVA in Tennessee, and you might have heard about the spill on the Dan River in North Carolina. <coughs> so they know that they needed to do something to start working towards a solution to this. And so in 2015, they passed what's called the CCR rule. Coal combustion residuals, or just coal ash is the easier way to say it. Uh, and that was that from now on, utilities are going to have to start storing this coal ash <coughs> in dry facilities, in a lined and capped facility away from our waterways. We can no longer continue to keep them like this. But that's more or less all the rules set in its, I don't know, 1,800 pages. Um, so we were really happy when Georgia Power said, okay, we're going to close all of our coal ash ponds. Because that's what needs to happen. They need to be closed, right? So we're really, really grateful that they decided to do that. However, the devil is in the details. And so sometimes they're closing it by taking the coal ash out of the ponds and putting them in a line and cap facility like you like. And that's fantastic. But other times they're just taking the water out, putting some dirt in it, some grass seed on top, doing a little advanced engineering technology, and leaving it in the ground. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about why that's a problem. This is a heavy metal load. These are streams, small streams that are seeping out of the coal ash ponds at Plant Shear. They're also found at Plant Branch and Plant Arkwright and Plant with Vanis. And Vanis on the coast, Arkwright and Shear in Macon and Juliet, Plant Branch in Milledgeville. Again, these are the plants I work at, so those are the pictures you're going to see today. So we know, uh, we've done tests for several years now, we know that these have arsenic, thallium, selenium, all kinds of things that you really don't want going into your lakes and your waterways. Sometimes they seep into these weird little kind of wetlands, and so you have this really fabulous wetlands of heavy metals and toxins uh, right next to the waterway. It doesn't show up very well in this picture, but this lower part right here is a similar. Groundwater contamination, I kind of lost the word contamination up there, but bear with me. Uh, this is a little more serious. We are finding that they are testing groundwater drinking wells that people have that are located around the coal ash ponds, they have either heavy metals or hexavalium. <coughs> hexavalium chromium is a bright byproduct left over when cleaning the scrubbers for the air emissions from these coal ash plants. And so it's fly ash. Um, at Plant Shearer, <coughs> we found hexavalium chromium level rated between 2.3 and 4.9 in GLs. And this is 33 to 70 percent higher than the normal cancer risk. So along with it, you have a lot of people with cancer. Uh, I'd like you to take a look at that top right-hand picture. That's brass, and this is the side kitchen to their main house. And this uh, little drip that they have, all of that orange that there's a light. Ah, there's a cup. And they've been letting this drain drip for about a month before I came and took uh, some samples of it. You can see the buildup. In 2016, you remember in January, 
January, or 2015 at the end of December. Uh, January 1st came along, and my phone rang for some crazy reason. I decided to pick it up. Uh, and I was told by people at Lake Sinclair that there was all this activity going on at Plant Branch in the whole echelon. So I went and I found that indeed that George Power had had to have an emergency overflow because the water got so high they were concerned about the structural integrity of the dam. Now, I get that, right? I'd rather have some emergency overflow than the whole dam bust into Lake Sinclair, so not, not, no qualms there. Uh, however, they didn't do the parts of letting EPD know what they were doing, et cetera, et cetera. So I went ahead and did some testing. There we go. I did some testing, and you can see the clear water in this bottom picture. So this was what was being poured or pumped out of the coal ash pond in the Lake Sinclair. Uh, there's pretty small, I'm sorry about the numbers here, but based on how, how long we watched them do this, which was 22 days, and based on the pictures we have of the pumps that they were using, we had pounds of boron and arsenic going into Lake Sinclair. Mm -hmm. during that time. This is on top of your regular seeps and flows. Um, I'm not sure particularly why we have this picture. This is a picture of a coal ash pond at uh, Plant Branch. It's a little bit further away from the well, Lake Sinclair. So we are now in the process, George Power and our legislature, everybody's in the process of going through the dewatering of these ponds, despite what they might do in the end, whether they excavate them or whether they keep them in place. So how do you dewater a decant pond, right? What does that mean? That literally means you take it out, you treat it, and you dump it into the nearby waterway. It's really the only solution. You can't. What else are you going to do with the water? Um, and that, that, that part we get, we support has to happen. There's been a few things that cause us some concern. Uh, up here you have the right one. Up here you have what's called Pond B at Plant Branch. You can see it's pretty full. Um, before they started the dewatering treatment last week, maybe two weeks ago, they had already dewatered that pond about a third. Based on our sampling of what was in the water before, when we had the floods, we know this is not great stuff. And at the time when we had the floods, George Powell assured us that everything that was being poured into Lake Sinclair was just the top stormwater. So thinking if we just took the most diluted top stormwater off of it, and those were the kind of numbers we were getting of these heavy metals going into Plant Branch, you can see some concerns about the pond going down about the and what's happened to that water when they admit that they have not treated it. This is Plant Branch. Know how to use a pointer. Sorry about that. Uh, in the bottom left is Plant McManus on the coast. They've already gone through dewatering twice. Unfortunately, a hurricane came by and filled up the pond after they dewatered it. Um, and as you can see in those pictures, especially down the coast, there was this weird sludge on the salt marsh grass right outside of the pond. So we tested the sludge. And indeed, you had all of your heavy metals, and, you know, all of them, but most of them present, arsenic, thallium, um, et cetera, et cetera. So all of this really is to say that we know there's a lot of heavy metals entering our waterways as we go through this movement of coal ash. We're all trying to work together to do it right, uh, and we will continue to do that. But what does that really mean for our fish? I've been talking to humans. I've been testing water wells. I've been testing water going into it, but I haven't tested any fish. And so this is the part. I don't know if we can do it now or a little later, but I'd really like to be interactive. You guys are the specialists here. I don't know much about fish. Gordon will tell you I can't even cast right. I cast up in the heavens. But sometimes I can a bit. So one thing I do know is that sampling fish in river is probably not going to produce much of information that I can use. And why is that? Fish swim, right? I would guess, but I would have the same results in Lake Sinclair. It's a huge lake. It gets pumped back into Lake Oconee every night, and it's a huge body of water. But what about something like Lake Juliet? Who here is familiar with Lake Juliet? Anyone got a couple? So it's a real small lake. It is completely confined. It has a little creek um, running underneath it. And I was wondering if you guys think that we could test fish for heavy metals in a small concentrated area, and if we would be likely to find anything. If it would be worth the effort. <coughs> So that's what I'm going to leave you with. I'm looking for some help. I'm looking for some thoughts. I'm looking for some of your knowledge. And if you could help share that with me, I'd be really, really grateful. Meanwhile, I will keep working to keep as much of those heavy metals out of our waterways as I can. Thank you. Save it for the panel. Jess, if you join us up here. Jess is going to be.